Welcome to Math with Professor E. In this video, we're going to learn about logarithmic differentiation. Logarithmic differentiation is an amazing tool to use when you are in two situations. First, when you're asked to differentiate something that looks like it's honestly just going to be cruel and unusual punishment because the chain rule just has too many layers to it. And then second, when your function has variables in both the base and exponent, so something like y equals x to the cosine of x, none of our other differentiation rules or techniques will get the job done. So you have to use logarithmic differentiation there. It's a really powerful technique for students in Calc 1 and for anyone prepping for the AP Calc AB or BC exams. And we're going to look at both kinds of scenarios. So let's just jump right in. Here's the process. First step is you take the natural log of both sides. And this is where the beauty comes in. You're going to use your log properties to expand. Okay. So if you need to review properties of logarithms, I have plenty of videos. I'll link them in the description. The second thing you do is you differentiate implicitly with respect to x or t, whatever your independent variable is. And then you're going to clean up. And the last thing is you solve for y prime. In most cases, that's dy dx. Okay? So here we go. Let's just jump right in. First thing, we need to take the natural log of both sides. So we have natural log of y equals natural log. I'm going to write this as x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1 to the 1 fourth because I'm getting ready to do what? Use my log properties. So the first one I'm going to use is the fact that I can move this exponent and make it the coefficient on my logarithm. Great. So I have natural log of y equals 1 fourth. And then I have another property I can use. Remember, natural log of a divided by b is equal to natural log of a minus natural log of b. So I can write this as natural log of the numerator minus natural log of the denominator. Now, once you've used all your log properties to expand as much as possible, it's time to differentiate. So I'm at that step now. Let me take the derivative of both sides and we're doing implicit differentiation because y is not isolated. So derivative of natural log of y is going to be 1 over y, and then I have to multiply by y prime or dy dx since it's a function of y that I just differentiated with respect to x. And then on the right-hand side, we've got 1 fourth. Now derivative of ln something is 1 over the something. And then we have to do chain rule. Derivative of the something, derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x minus, and then derivative of ln x squared minus 1, same thing, 1 over x squared minus 1 times derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. Okay? Very good. So from here, let's see how much can we clean up. So 1 over y dy dx equals 1 fourth times, this is 2x over x squared plus 1 minus 2x over x squared minus 1. A lot of the times we don't get a common denominator when we do logarithmic differentiation, but in this case I will because you notice how they're conjugate pairs. So it'll clean up nicely. So I'll multiply this guy by x squared minus 1, top and bottom, and then this one by x squared plus 1. Okay. Let's see what's going on. 1 over y dy dx equals 1 fourth times, I'm just going to distribute this out now, so that'll be 2x cubed minus 2x, and then distribute this one also, minus 2x cubed minus 2x over x squared minus 1 and x squared plus 1 gives me x to the fourth minus 1. Okay, so these 2x cubes cancel, and then we have now 1 over y, dy dx equals 1 fourth times negative 4x over x to the fourth minus 1. Ooh, this 1 fourth and the 4 can cancel. And then the last thing we need to do is get dy dx by itself. So who's getting in the way of that? This 1 over y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So we have dy dx equals negative x over x to the fourth minus 1. And then you're not going to leave y in your answer. You're going to go back, go back, go back, 
and replace it with the original function, what we had here. Fourth root of x squared plus one over x squared minus one, good? So this is y, x squared plus one over x squared minus one. Okay, let's box that with pride. I mean, it may not be the most beautiful looking derivative, but it's correct, so you should love it just as much as any other problem you've done. All right, good, good. Let's look at another example. Again, when you first look at it, like if your teacher's not gonna tell you, oh, it's time to do logarithmic differentiation, when you look at this, you would go, oh my God, what a nightmare. Does anyone really hate me that much that I would have to differentiate like this cube root, then I'd have to do quotient rule. And within that quotient rule, product rule, product rule, lots of chain rule too. Yuck. No, nobody hates you that much. Please believe. So what's going to happen is you're going to take the natural log of both sides. You're going to expand and then you're going to relax because taking the derivative won't be so bad. Now I want to teach you a cool little shortcut. Are you ready? Are you ready for the cool little shortcut? So we already know ln a divided by b is ln of a minus ln of b. Ln of a times b. Do you remember this one, how to expand? Good. Ln of a plus ln of b. Okay. Are you ready for this? Ln of a times b divided by c times d. I want you to get to where you can expand it in one shot. Now, the long way is it's ln of a times b minus ln of c times d. But then you break each of those up more. Ln of a plus ln of b minus ln of c plus ln of d. And then when you distribute that negative, you have ln of a plus ln of b minus ln of c minus ln of d, right? Look, look. The terms that were in the denominator of the argument end up with minus signs in front of them. And then the terms that were in the numerator are positive. That's because logarithms are exponents. So when you expand them, they behave just like your exponents do. Negative exponents we usually rewrite in the denominator positive. So the denominator ones have the minus signs, numerator ones have positive signs. So I would love it if you could just look at this and go straight here, you know? Can you do it? I think you can. So let's scoot this off to the side, okay? Meditate on that. Maybe you already know how to do that. Maybe you picked up on it when you were in pre-calc doing a bunch of log problems. If so, great. Okay, we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. So ln of y equals ln, I'm already getting ready, so I'm gonna write the right-hand side instead of cube root, I'm gonna put it to the one-third power, okay? Because we know, what can we do with this one-third? We can bring it down in the front like that, yes. So we have ln of y equals one-third. Now look, uh -huh. a, b, c, d, you got it? So it's gonna be ln three x plus one plus ln x plus four, no, not squared, put the two there, minus ln x to the fourth plus six minus ln x plus eight. So all those things that you practiced in pre-calc, log properties, it was for this moment here right now. Like you don't just expand logs for kicks. You do it because it's gonna help you when you're in calculus. Okay, are you ready to take the derivative? I think we expanded as much as we possibly could. So left-hand side, this is gonna get routine. It's always one over y dy dx equals one third. Now watch this, I'm gonna do the chain rule while I take the derivative. So derivative of ln of something is one over the something, and then you would multiply by the derivative of three x plus one. I'm gonna just put it in the top right away. Why dilly dally? Plus two, derivative of ln x plus four is one over x plus four. Minus derivative of ln x to the fourth plus six, put the x to the fourth plus six there. Derivative of x to the fourth plus six, four x cubed. Minus, this is one over x plus eight. I would not get a common denominator. That would be sick. There's four terms. There's no point. It's not going to clean up cute. Um, you could distribute the one third. I wouldn't. So we could just say dy dx is equal to one third times y times all of that. And then you're just going to go back and say, well, who was y? Oh, it was this guy up here. So we have one third times the cube root of, I forgot it already, 3x plus 1 
x plus 4 squared over x to the 4th plus 6 times x plus 8. That's all on the outside. That's y, right? All of this is y. And then you have the rest. I'll rewrite it this time since we're done. The rest is 3 over 3x plus 1 plus 2 over x plus 4 minus 4x cubed over x to the 4th plus 6 minus 1 over x plus 8. Woo! Now, you might say that felt like a lot of work, but believe me, it's less than if you had just gone for it and differentiated right away without taking the natural log. Oh no, syntax error. Shame on me. Let's fix this. Woo! No one saw that. Okay, how was that? Good. Favorite problem of the day? I hope so. I hope so. I love these so much. I think they're fantastic. Okay, moving on. We have y equals the square root of x times e to the x squared minus x times x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. So if you were to just go for it, if you're like, forget logarithmic differentiation, I don't like logarithms. I mean, my God, you'd have a beast of a triple product rule, chain rule mixed in the whole time. I, I do not recommend. So here we go. Natural log of both sides. Natural log of y equals natural log of rad x e to the x squared minus x times x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. So we really have three terms. So I'm going to have three natural logs on the right hand side. One, two, right? Three. The argument is a product of three functions of x. So ln, instead of rad x, I'm going to write it as x to the 1 half plus ln of e to the x squared minus x. That's going to clean up cute plus ln x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Okay, still clean up. It's not calculus time yet. Bring that 1 half down front. This is going to be 1 half ln of x plus, oh, this cleans up just stunningly. It'll be x squared minus x plus, and then same thing here, bring that 2 thirds down front, 2 thirds ln x plus 1. How are you guys? Okay, now it's calculus time, so let's take the derivative. This is always going to be 1 over y dy dx equals, then we have here, 1 half derivative of ln x is 1 over x. This is relaxing, just 2x minus 1, plus, last term, 2 thirds times 1 over x plus 1. Okay, I think we're pretty much done. We're going to multiply both sides by y. Okay, so this guy's gone now. And then usually you put it in the front. You do. So dy dx equals, instead of y, I'm going to write rad x e to the x squared minus x times x plus 1 to the 2 thirds times, what's this? 1 over 2x plus 2x minus 1 plus 2 over 3 times x plus 1. And no, I'm not getting a common denominator. I don't think your instructor would need you to. Check with them. How was that one? Cute, huh? Okay. Now, for the first three examples that I did, logarithmic differentiation wasn't absolutely necessary. You could still just use your other differentiation techniques. It would be a nightmare, but you could get to the right answer. For the following, you have to use logarithmic differentiation. There's no way around it because you have a variable in the base and the exponent. So none of the other techniques thus far will work. So we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. And in this case, the only thing we can do is just move this x to the front. So I have natural log of y equals x times natural log of cosine x. Now we differentiate. So derivative of the left-hand side is gonna be one over y dy dx. And then now I need to do product rule. I have a product of two functions. So when you do the product rule, just think to yourself, the two functions take turns having their derivative taken. So x, it's your turn. So x's derivative is 1. It's not your turn, ln of cosine x. You stay put. Plus, now x, you just had your turn, so you stay put. And then derivative of ln cosine x is going to be 1 over cosine x chain rule times derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. Good? 
Okay, so 1 over y dy dx equals ln cosine x minus x tan x. Ooh. And then multiply both sides by y. Who was y? Cosine of x to the x. So dy dx equals cosine of x to the x times ln of cosine x minus x tan x. How'd you do with that one? Good? Okay, I think these are fun. I hope you do too. Otherwise, what a miserable year you're going to have. All right, one more grand finale. I've put this on an exam many a time. Oh yeah, y equals ln of x raised to the ln of x. So you're like, there's so many ln of x's. Certainly we don't need to take the natural log of both sides, but we do. So ln of y equals ln of ln of x raised to the ln of x. How exciting. So yes, you can move this exponent down front. Don't worry. So you have ln of y equals ln of x times ln of ln of x. I want you to see that we're going to do product rule. Here's one function. Here's the other function. Whew. Okay, hang tight. Derivative of left-hand side is just 1 over y dy dx. Now they're going to take turns. ln of x, it's not your turn. Derivative of ln of ln of x. So derivative of ln something is 1 over the something and then times the derivative of the inside function, 1 over x. Plus, now I take the derivative of ln x, it's his term, 1 over x, and then you leave the other function alone, ln of ln of x. You guys okay? Let me call them f, g. This is f, g prime, f prime, g. The order doesn't matter when you do product rule. Okay, now we clean up. 1 over y dy dx equals, ooh, do you see this? How snazzy. Okay, so we have 1 over x plus 1 over x times ln of ln of x. I would factor that out. Why not? So we have 1 over y dy dx equals 1 over x times 1 plus ln of ln of x. Or you could just put it all over x. That might look the cutest. Let's do that. And then, yeah, multiply both sides by y. And y was ln of x to the ln of x. So let's write it like this. dy dx equals, let's put y first, ln of x raised to the ln of x. And then we'll have 1 plus ln of ln of x over x. Yeah? Beautiful. Let's, let's box this bad boy and call it a day. Okay, if you can redo all five of these examples on your own and get them perfectly right, then you know you're in business, right? It's all fun and games watching me solve them. But remember, I am a professional. This is like when you watch the Olympics and you're watching the gymnastics team or you're watching the sprinters. Just because you watch them doesn't mean you're going to be able to do anything exciting if someone threw you on a balance beam or had you do, you know, a mile dash. So you got to redo these on your own. Practice, practice perfectly and master the techniques one concept at a time. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I have a whole playlist of Calculus One video lectures that also are perfect for AP Calc A, B, B, C. If you need help with Calc 2, 3, differential equations, I got you. I have my full video library organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. And you can also follow me.